Let's call this sorting through the bulking BS. And I'm gonna use BS, that way I don't get in trouble on YouTube in the first minute. Um, so he here's something really weird to me. I don't understand how this scientific snitch person uh, came out of nowhere and became extremely popular overnight, and now they're an authority on bulking. Uh, who have you produced? Who, who have you coached? And what have you accomplished? And I'm not saying that to be disparaging, um, but I am pointing out that uh, there's a lot of people out there who have years of success. Um, Justin Harris, Chris Aceto, Milo Sarsev, uh, various coaches who have put people on stage and been very successful. So if you're going to say that all those people are wrong, um, like show your results instead of citing studies. And this is the problem with the studies is, uh, you know, multiple people. And it's not just the scientific snitch. I've seen other people come out on this too. Bulking is dead. You shouldn't bulk, blah, 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 blah. And then they point out, well, you can build muscle in a caloric deficit. And it's like, well, take a look at the study though. Those were untrained people who were obese. So here's a concept that's going to be really difficult to understand for a lot of people. Um, although you are in a caloric deficit in terms of the amount of food that you're consuming, you are getting a massive amount of calories from the body fat that you're burning. Okay, so this is really just as simple as it gets. Let's say, you know, you burn 2000 calories a day, you're eating 1600 calories. Well, where's that other 400 calories coming? Oh, it comes from body fat, right? So you're not really in a caloric deficit if you think about it in terms of energy. What's happening is you're mobilizing stored body fat to make up that deficit. You see? So now we're back to equilibrium. You have to have homeostasis. You can't burn 2,000 calories and only have 1,600 calories available. You, you can't have negative calories. So it comes from the body fat. We all know this. this we understand this concept. So you have body fat, and when you don't eat, your body utilizes that for the energy. So in these studies where people are building muscle in a caloric deficit, yes, they have adequate amounts of protein, but these are also people who are not at like 6% body fat. These are people who have more than adequate body fat. Hmm, okay, so that changes things, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Because if you are a natural bodybuilder, let's go with natural bodybuilders because I don't, uh, I don't want to get into all the, the chemistry of drugs that, um, you know, trend is actually used in cattle because it in increases feed efficiency. So you can feed them less and they'll still gain muscle. So it kind of violates some of the things that we would see in normal physiology. But sticking with natural bodybuilders, let's say that you, you know, dieted down and you did your show and you weigh 155 pounds and I don't know, you're six to 8% body fat. You're really lean. The only way for you to gain muscle at this point is to eat a caloric surplus. You are not going to gain muscle in a deficit. You're already so lean that your body is conserving energy. We all know this. Um, if you weigh 200 pounds and you're currently maintaining your 200 pound body weight at 3000 calories, and then you diet down to 160, you're not going to be eating 3000 calories anymore. You are going to have to decrease your caloric intake over time. It's just how it is, guys. You know, uh, when I when I weighed 205 pounds, I was eating a lot more food and maintaining 205 pounds versus being 158 pounds. I have to eat less to weigh less. Radical concept. But like for you to maintain your weight when you weigh 205 pounds, you have to eat more because you are a bigger person. When you weigh 165 pounds, you don't have to eat as much. Now, back to this whole bulking thing. Sure, if you are untrained, yes, you can easily gain muscle, even in a caloric deficit. That's often, though, take a look at the people's body fat percentages. They're untrained. They're not shredded lean. This isn't talking about, like, a, a bodybuilder. This is even talking about powerlifters, because powerlifters today, some of them are jacked and shredded. These guys pack on as much muscle as they possibly can and get as lean as they possibly can to get into the lowest weight class that they possibly can. Like Dan Green doesn't have an excess of body fat. Like Dan Green is not walking around at 40% body fat. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Think about that for a minute, guys. I mean, even if you look like John Hack, 
Like, this is not a person who's walking around at 50% body fat. So even power lifters have gotten to the point where now they're getting lean too, okay? But if you're a bodybuilder, and you're stupid lean because you just came out of a contest, and now you're going into your off-season, you're going to need a caloric surplus to gain weight. It's just the way it is, guys. Um, and yes, are there studies showing that people gained muscle in a caloric deficit? Yeah, but they had adequate body fat. They're not, they're not bodybuilders who are like shredded lean. Um, you know, can you gain muscle while you're maintaining your weight? Yeah, you can. I've done that many times. Um, that was my strategy for years. You know, it was like, eat your way up to the weight you want to weigh. So, eat your way up till you weigh 165. And you're a soft and doughy 165. And then you eat to maintain 165 and lean out at 165. Yeah. Because I'm burning body fat. So in terms of energy, okay, um, technically, yes, you are in a caloric deficit because you are eating less than you burn. But by eating less than you burn, you're mobilizing body fat. Once you get down to the point where you're like 10% body fat, this doesn't continue to work the way that it did when you were 15, 18, 20% body fat. It just doesn't. Um, and anyone who's done this for long enough knows that, you know, when you're shredded lean, you don't gain muscle, at least if you're not on drugs. I know these bodybuilders who are enhanced uh, talk about growing into a show. And I, I don't know enough about performance enhancing drugs to comment intelligently on which drugs cause that. I only know that tren, trenbolone is used in cattle because it increases feed efficiency. I don't know what other drugs are being used. I don't know enough about um, enhanced bodybuilding, okay? But I do know that there's at least one drug that improves feed efficiency, and so you can gain muscle because it changes how your body functions physiologically, okay? But we're not discussing that here because even in these studies on untrained beginners with adequate body fat, they're not putting them on trend alone, okay? So, deciphering and sifting through all the bulking BS, okay, uh, the reality of the situation is these things work at different times and different scenarios. So yes, if you're a beginner, maybe even an immediate, and you have adequate body fat, sure, you can gain muscle in a deficit. That is not the most efficient way for you to gain muscle. That is not the fastest way for you to gain muscle. But yes, you can gain muscle. However, if you are incredibly lean, you just got out of a show, or you've dieted down for whatever reason, maybe you had a high school reunion, as if people go to those. Um, at that point, you are going to need a caloric surplus. You're going to need to gain some body fat. You're going to need to gain, because you can't, by definition, I remember Lane Norton made this comment once, and it was one of the silliest things he's ever said. And this is not calling Lane silly or attacking Lane, but he made this comment that a ketogenic diet as a prep diet is not a sustainable diet. Dear heart, no prep diet is a sustainable diet. If you stay in a caloric deficit forever for the rest of your life, eventually you would starve to death. So if you keep adjusting your calories so that you're always in a 100 calorie deficit, eventually you'll be down to nothing and you'll die. That's called starvation. No prep diet is sustainable. So I don't care if it's a ketogenic prep diet or if it's a high carb prep diet, no prep diet is sustainable. You can't do that forever. You know, John Meadows uh, did this thing where he was eating nothing but egg whites. Now, you can do that going into a show because it's short term. You would not do that for the rest of your life. Okay? So prep diets for bodybuilding are temporary by definition. You diet down for the show. And then, I don't care, you can reverse diet out of it or you can just go straight up to regular calories. It doesn't matter. But the point being here, okay, that yes, there are studies showing people gaining muscle in a caloric deficit. However, that is not talking about bodybuilders, natural bodybuilders, or people who are stupid shredded lean. This is talking about beginners who have a lot of body fat to lose in the first place. So yes, if you have adequate body fat and you are losing body fat because you are dieting, yes, 
you can gain muscle because your body will make up that energy deficit from body fat. When you are shredded lean, you don't have an, a, a surplus of body fat for your body to build more muscle through, you know, other energy means. So um, this is where, you know, people need to stop turning to the science as if it's a prescription. It isn't. Real world is always different. And I have yet to see, you know, uh, tons of RCTs and meta-analyses and research reviews on high-level bodybuilders. There's like a case study over here or a, a small study over here that has a sample size of like six. Yeah, sure. Now show me someone who has coached, you know, 500 clients and ask that person. I bet that person has a lot better idea of what it takes to gain muscle because they've been doing this for a long time. So when you've put over 100 people on stage and helped them gain muscle in the off season, you understand that at some point you have to be in a caloric surplus, AKA bulking. And no, you don't have to eat junk food. You don't have to eat pizza and ice cream to bulk. The whole dirty bulk thing, sure. You can bulk on meat and rice. Justin Harris, meat, rice, repeat. Whoever can eat the, meat, the most meat and rice without getting bored, gets the biggest. Yeah. Justin's correct. Eat meat and rice over and over and over again, five to seven meals a day, and, you know, eventually you'll get bigger. Okay? This is just how it is, guys. I don't have anything more to say on this. I feel like I've, I've tried to explain it in eight different directions so that it's clear. Um, I just, if, if you doubt me, go try it yourself. Diet down to your 6% body fat, and then let me know if you can continue to gain muscle while maintaining 6% body fat, or if you have to start increasing your calories and having a caloric surplus. Try it yourself. Like, forget the studies. Just try it yourself and see what happens.